Hey everyone, this is uh, week nine. Welcome back. Uh, we had a week off, uh, <laughs> but we're uh, back at full strength. So this week we're going to be talking about night. We're going to try to define uh, nighttime and what, you know, that may look like, or at least, you know, five possibilities of what that may look like. As always, I tell you guys, these are just five small exercises on a single theme. But the idea is that if you want to paint along, you can have, you know, a hundred ideas that are far better than mine. But these are going to be my five paintings for this week that have to do with night. So uh, welcome back and uh, let's get started. Okay, so uh, welcome back. <laughs> we had what may appear to be a week off, but honestly, uh, both Danny and myself were, uh, were working. Danny was doing all the prep work to uh, upload all the videos and finishing editing all the videos. And, uh, and she was uploading them because I was actually at a workshop overseas. So I usually do a bunch of workshops. I'm trying to do less and less now uh, because it's honestly, it's going to be very, very difficult if we want to do this a weekly thing or at least a very consistent project. It's going to be very difficult for myself to be traveling constantly. I usually, if it's a week workshop, I'll usually be out for about nine or ten days, which means that all the videos that are going to be in YouTube for that space of time have to be done prior to, uh, to the trip. And that's exhausting. I mean, we have the highest commitment to this project, but honestly, we never expected it to be uh, really, really, you know, this, this tiring. So, uh, props to, to all the people that put out videos, like daily videos, cause that's honestly insane for us to, um, to produce these, to actually like paint these, uh, and then Danny edit all of these. And then, you know, she hands it to me and then I, I do the VO and then she finally edits them. <laughs> adding all the uh, cool graphics and all that cool stuff that you can see. That's a, that's a ton of work to do in a single day. So we've recognized that, but we're super, super psyched uh, to be back. And for this Monday, this start of a uh, new week, we have a pretty cool theme, which is actually uh, not conditioning, but it actually gives us a, a pretext to say, well, how do I define this word, night? or nighttime, or nightlife, or anything associated with night, how do I redefine it through painting? And the idea, like I've always said, is to redefine it not only once, not only once and then repeat that same exercise during the five days of the week, but to try and actually kind of dig in deeper and say, well, okay, how do I understand this term and how can I translate this term through painting? And that's the purpose of, of this whole project, to just push ourselves. And, you know, we may get to uh, some paintings that are kind of uncomfortable because we, we start being honest with ourselves and we start saying, well, I kind of did that before. Or, wow, this doesn't really seem like it belongs to me and I'm just doing it for superficial reasons. Encountering all these biases, all these obstacles in the way is actually quite fascinating and seeing how we can deal with those things seeing how we choose to resolve those things seeing how honest we can be with ourselves while attempting to solve all these problems it's quite amazing it's actually really really incredible i think that's at the core of this project not really just painting for the sake of painting if it was just about painting we you know pretty much wouldn't necessarily have to do themed weeks we would just say let's just paint <laughs> let's just paint something and that's about it but again there's a in a sense like a higher purpose to this which is self-recognition and just acknowledgement of the of yes the painter that we are but also and more importantly the person that we are and the values that we bring of ourselves into our painting uh, having said that and I guess that's a cool reminder of what the sense of this project is. It's cool to, to visually also 
try and interpret these themes. I think that's what's most appealing to us, that because it is a visual medium, it is a visual language, we can find so many ways, endless ways, really infinite ways, as many ways as there are painters in this world, I always say, <laughs> to solve this problem. And the first one I picked was one that was kind of not the easiest to pick, I think, like the lowest hanging fruit, which would be totally fine too. If you say night, you're going to immediately think of, I don't know, the Van Gogh's Starry Night, that sort of painting. Uh, we always think of deep blues and, you know, a sky or your moon being your light source. And I thought that while that is amazing, and I've made reference how Remington was just an amazing painter of night, uh, we have opportunities now during this week to say, yeah, that's cool, but what are other ways that we can interpret night? And one thing that I found was, was probably the coolest when I started to think, well, what does it mean to paint night or to paint at night or to paint nightlife or night scenes? And the one thing that I think I, I understood very quickly was that we no longer have the sun as our light source. That is pretty much like the biggest concept in all of this. In fact, in every way you try to redefine this term, night, the one thing that you almost immediately come up to is that there is no sun. You know, if there was sun, then, you know, the painting wouldn't really make a lot of sense. And what we're trying to be is super sensitive to the fact that we now have to have other types of light sources, which is super cool if you really think about it what does it mean to have other types of light sources and in what environment are these light sources in and how are they affecting the way we inhabit these environments? I think that was my coolest realization when I started thinking. So I thought, well, you know, if I think at night, I'm going to think also of bar scene, of going out and what in my memory, were the coolest places that I that I went out to when I was, you know, when I was uh, younger, for example. And I remember this one place in New York that had, um, it was like Avenue B, I don't know, somewhere around 6th Street, maybe, and which I'm sure it's probably not even there. But it had this velvet, this very heavy, heavy velvet uh, curtain that you had to go through. And then it, it was actually... a kind of simple bar. It was just a small table, some, some cool chairs. But the coolest thing was that as soon as you crossed that curtain, just everything changed. Like you, you were coming from this very urban, you know, street where there was a bunch of like street lights and, you know, lights from the buildings around you. I was going to say star and moon, but then I remembered, no, it's New York. <laughs> you never see stars in New York. And then you suddenly came into this place. You went through this, this kind of imaginary border that was this curtain. And everything on the inside was velvety and red and just really, really kind of deep wine color. And it was just an incredible mood. Just cool stuff. But I just remember it was, it was like almost entering like a soup. The feeling of, of how this place could only be experienced or felt by this transition from this nighttime, this being in the street at night, and then trespassing this curtain to this, you know, velvet uh, <laughs> underground. <laughs> that was lame, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep that. <laughs> and I wanted to catch that feeling again. And I'm painting a, a friend of mine, a former student, a really fantastic person who has this kind of, you know, awesome, deep, melancholic, dark soul, but is also one of the nicest people I think I've ever known. And I think it was really, really cool to try to capture the, the ambiguity of, of what I know about him and then this kind of darker persona. And this is a still of a little video that he had of himself and I constantly do that. When people put out videos on Instagram, let's say, I will constantly just pause it and then screenshot because I, I think that that's an amazing uh, reminder of how people choose to portray themselves. And that to me is like perfect, perfect. And 
more so if I know the person, but it's it's a perfect way to um, to approximate to to that human being because that human being is saying, "Hey, this is this is something that I put together. This is like a small little presentation of myself that I've put together, and I'm socializing it. I'm I'm making it public. I'm telling the people that I know, "Hey, this is the way I want to portray myself," and I I love that. I love taking a manner in which a person wants to show themselves and then reinterpreting that through paint and trying to balance it with things that I know about them, which I think it's kind of cool. So I, I did that. I screenshot that, <laughs> that video and I got these awesome, amazing, amazing shapes coming from the cigarette smoke. And I thought, oh, this is cool. And if I actually really make this monochromatic you know this palette was was very very simple it was um titanium white uh, my lemon yellow which is my bismuth yellow cad red alizarin crimson and the darker ones i got by mixing alizarin and raw umber so there's nothing actually shifting my hue from from that red orange that i i'm getting from the yellow to my red violet that I'm getting from the alizarin and probably like a darker red violet when I put some raw umber um, in there. But there's no blues, there's no anything like that. that again, there's no shifting of, of that uh, red hue. I'm, I'm trying to maintain um, the whole painting in that red hue. So my lighter uh, reds in this painting are just going to be cad red with just a touch of of my bismuth yellow. And I think that's super cool. That actually, I was trying to drive this idea very powerfully with this first painting. The fact that, yes, we are sacrificing that incredible light source that is the sun. But what we can gain is just this insane, deep, like I always say, very palpable mood that is enveloping everything absolutely everything. And I wanted to push that kind of fact by saying, wow, let's yes, do a portrait, but let's try to do, and I think this is going to be like a little sub theme for this week's paintings, which is cause and effect. Let's see the, the, the reason for something being, and let's try to push the effect. And I love that. I actually absolutely love that. So if there was a red light in this, let's really push that hue. But it's, if also if there's if there's this um, this mouth kind of very sensually almost just pushing out that all that smoke, um, let's try to find a way to say that in a very abstract manner. Let's try to see the the effect and the affectation that that act has over the body. So in formal terms, it means that that left eye is actually of a lighter value because all that smoke is traveling upwards. And the rim of his glasses are also being affected by that smoke. So there is, there is a, 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 again, a, a tangible, a physical affectation of what that smoke is doing. And once we get up there, we can do, you know, this kind of almost solid shape. It just, it really feels as solid as, um, as the modeling of the head, and I thought, "Wow, this is this is a ton of fun! Like this is going to be absolutely awesome to uh, to be able to to try and and pull this off." And I feel these are things that are I don't know if exclusive to something um, as nighttime, but it's a it's a personal reflection that I think I I actually encountered while thinking about nightlife. So I thought that was super, super cool. And it did remind me, and this is one artist that I think would be very cool, even though, you know, he's not painting night. This week doesn't mean that we're just going to see painters that paint at night. Because to be honest, I would be, you know, <laughs> I would be trying to dig in deep just to find paintings of night scenes. And I don't know that, you know, that's not the purpose of this, trying to see how I define night, but then trying to see if it ticks any of the of the boxes that other people that paint at night, you know, also ticked. So that's not the point. What I encountered with this painting was this attribute of smoke, this property of smoke, of becoming far more palpable while I was painting it 
than the one that I saw in the video that Daniel posted. So that was very, very telling. It was very cool. And as soon as I thought of that, I remembered the paintings that Adrian Genie did, uh, the Romanian painter. He's a fantastic, fantastic painter. And particularly, the paintings that were of a very limited palette, they were uh, very Gerhard Richter in a way, where you are using archive as your starting point. And he was using, which I thought the way he totally took out of context the imagery was, was just fantastic. He was using a still of the Three Stooges of a pie fight. And he actually painted this guy with a pie on his face. And what was physical comedy, he turned it into a very, very almost violent picture, a very abstract, very violent picture. In many ways, like, let's say, like Francis Bacon would be able to do with, with his starting from, from Moybridge photographs, for example. And I thought that was awesome. And that's kind of what I held on to. I held on to this kind of little branch for the whole painting, just reminding myself, oh, wow, again, that physical quality of something that's taken out of context can actually be quite dramatic. So I think this is super cool because we started just trying to understand nighttime and trying to define what it means to experience night, to experience the lack of sun. And I ended up kind of stumbling into this opportunity that, you know, something that can be very much so commonplace, like, you know, somebody just puffing smoke from a cigarette can become solid, almost like an entity of itself. And you can actually flip that into saying, wow, this has a presence also. And it's a presence that can affect the portrait, can affect the person that is actually puffing this smoke and can affect the mood and can affect the uh, the way you read the painting. I thought that was a lot of fun. I thought that was that was super cool to paint. And I think that that sets the mood for, for what we're gonna do next. Now, I am gonna do some more <laughs> traditional paintings, some more traditional night paintings, but I think the idea of exploring the theme is actually super cool. Then executing the painting is, is another thing in and of itself, but just finding ways to make any theme interesting to us, I think that's the first and most important step before actually even painting. Again, like I said, we're super, super happy to be back. Uh, I think we'll have a cool week ahead of us. I'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, Spanish uh, Tuesday, Martes de Español. So you guys better brush up on, on your Spanish so, <laughs> so you, can, you can enjoy the full video. But I'll see you guys later. Bye.